Order all your Half Shell favorites for takeout or delivery. Visit www.halfshelloysterhouse.com to browse a familiar menu and place your delivery or takeout order in minutes. Same menu prices, just a $5 flat delivery fee every time at Half Shell Oyster House. Located at 115 Laura Park Cove, Suite 105, Floatwood, Mississippi, 39232. Or you can give us a call at 769-257-7586. And oh yeah, tell them Sonya sent you. She say, she say, she say, she say sports. She say, she say, she say, she say sports. She say, she say, she say, she say sports. She say, she say. Sonia and welcome back to She Say She Say Sports and our segment Kelsey's Corner. Please welcome back award-winning journalist and host of Listening with KNN, Kelsey Nicole Nelson. Hello, Kelsey. How are you? Hi, Sonia. I'm great. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure and joy to be back with someone as talented and as gracious as you. So it feels good to see you again. Same here. Absolutely. <laughs> Kudos to you as, as well. Thank you so much. Girl, yeah. so how's your week been since Sunday? Uh, Ooh, yeah, let me tell I you. <laughs> it's been a little complicated here. So, you know, I live in D.C., about an hour out from Baltimore, 45 minutes on a good day if traffic is nice to you. And, you know, a lot of people here wanting the hometown team to yeah. go to Vegas. You know, I'm about to I leave actually soon to go to Vegas and cover Super Bowl. And the team that many of us thought would be there, Sonia, is not going to be there. You know, the Ravens were a top seed in the AFC. They had the bye week, right, going into the wild card mm -hmm. games and the playoffs. Uh, Lamar Jackson about to get another MVP, right, his second MVP in the league. And everything looked right. They were getting healthy at the right time. Mark Andrews coming back, right? That was huge because, you know, you look at him before going out for injury was Lamar Jackson's favorite target. And you're like, oh, we have another tight end to help mm -hmm. Isaiah Likely, right, which is great. And another weapon at the, Lamar's disposal, you know, and I think – you know, everything just seemed right. You know, first time we got to host a championship game since 1971. Yeah. <laughs> you know, crab cakes and football is what we do in Baltimore. So again, everything just aligned, you know, and we knew to be the best, you had to beat the best. So all that to say, you know, you saw the game, a game that I really think Baltimore gave away. And that's not taking anything away from the Kansas City Chiefs, Sonia, because they played a hell of a game. You know, they got out oh, yeah. quickly, right? 14 points quick on the board. Um, and then their defense, you know, was able to cause disruption. You look at the Baltimore had three turnovers, right? And, you know, you I think about the Zay Flowers fumble at the end zone. You know, Baltimore had two turnovers in the in the, in the red zone. Zay Flowers won, of course, Snead knocking that ball out at the goal line, which right. was a touchdown. Then the interception that Lamar threw into triple coverage. And then I look at also how they were able to disrupt the Ravens. Ravens had, you know, when they look at themselves, they had 95 yards of penalties, folks. Eight penalties for 95 yards. You're not going to win that. And they left the run game in Sonia that had been successful all season, even with, you know, all the backup running backs that have had to step in and be the people. Because you think about J.K. Dobbins going out, you think about Keenan Mitchell going out, but yet they still had Gus Edwards. You know, they still had Justice Hill, very capable running backs who have had really successful years. And it just looked like a whole new Ravens team. So I think people in Baltimore are going like this, scratching their head. <laughs> what was that team that we saw on display? On the whole time? season. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you destroyed every team that came to your, your, your stadium. And it's like, what happened? But as we know, uh, Mahomes is nothing to play with. He's never lost on, Bad boy. <laughs> on the road. And I guess he said, not not today. And they struck fast, like you said, to make sure. Yep. That rap, they, I guess they kind of razzled. Uh, yeah, Baltimore. Rattled, rattled, I'm sorry, rattled the Ravens. And so. Yeah, Travis Kelsey had a game. Freaking, what was it, 1900? 11. 
Like, come on. And if you're going to not have anybody have a good game, let it be Travis Kelsey that you shut out and block down. You got the number one defense and he kept finding space and grooves. I mean, it's like, come on, you all. Like, you, Travis Kelsey, of all people, we should have been figured out by now. <laughs> you would That's think. An amazing game. He actually did. And, you know, I mean, I hate the season is over for the Ravens. I was really, really poor for them, but it is what it is. And speaking of Travis, <laughs> uh, Travis I guess since they've won, uh, we'll be seeing the phenom of Taylor Swift. <laughs> so, um, I don't have a problem with it, but people are really angry about her. Uh, people are in their feelings, like big what feelings. Is a, what is the problem? <laughs> Do you think if it was Beyonce or um, Jennifer Lopez that they'll be feeling the same way? I mean... That's so interesting that you asked that question. You know, I well, let's be honest, both of them are off grams, right? JLo just got finally got her boo and married, and Beyonce ain't uh -huh. no with Jay Z. But you know, I think when you look at Taylor Swift, you know, I, he takes me back to that Kanye moment, you know, when he went on stage and embarrassed her at the award show, you know, like you shouldn't have won that. I think we've, I think a lot of people have a love hate relationship with Taylor Swift, meaning she's this global phenomenon. But I think some people are just trying to figure out like how she got to that point in level, not saying that they should. And I think, you know, when some people see her, they're like, well, 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 what is it? What is it that people see? Because obviously she has an it factor. But also, Sonia, honestly, I think football fans just, they love football, right? We get into the game because we love the game. You know, it wasn't right. because um Beyonce all of a sudden you know performed at halftime I remember in New Orleans and brought us into the game no if you like the halftime right. the halftime show but if you like football you're watching each quarter right you're watching all, right. all 60 minutes of the game and so I think with Taylor Swift I think football fans are just feeling like we've gotten away from the game right because you see how many times sure. her in a broadcast and then football fans are like what do you like there's a big game there's a game going on down there focus on them focus on the players we want to see the right. whole act of the game. So I think it's more people just kind of, and let's be honest, people like to have things the way they've been. And so for a long time, it's just been football and then celebs come to games, but you see them pregame, you see them postgame. You know, we've never really seen anybody shown this much at a football game until Taylor Swift has come. And so again, right. I think, you know, you took what we know and all of a sudden you've changed it. You didn't really explain it to us. And I think football fans are like, wait a minute, I'm confused. Like what's happening? And so I think it's just happening so fast, so quickly that mm -hmm. I think a lot of fans are just, there's a little irritated that their favorite sport has kind of been, um, you know, and daunted by she sure. who is Taylor Swift. But, you know, I think she's good for football. She's brought in more money. She's brought in 30 more million. Money. Reported 30 million. Isn't yeah. that crazy? And she's brought in a younger fan base. She's brought in more women into the game. So I don't think she's bad, but I do think we have to, you know, Super Bowl, let's remember it's the big game. Usher is the halftime show. Yes, of course, I understand showing Taylor Swift because her boo's playing, but, you know, let's, let's, let's do, give people the game that they're going to want to see. Right. And also, I noticed that. <laughs> They put her, they had her more on the camera after they won the game than Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I think I saw a little interview with him, <laughs> but it was mainly Taylor Kissing. Oh, um, it was the love, it's the Taylor love, helping her find help his mom find kills. I mean, it was just, yeah. It was, you know, I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> she's I taking it. all the storylines. You know, like I said, I know she's good for football, but I think that's what people are saying, like, like we get it. We get she's dating Travis. We get they look like the perfect couple. You know, maybe he'll pop the question at the game and, you know, they'll uh, both hopefully live happily ever after. But again, I think people are just wondering, like, we're taking away, you know, from the game. She's not the first celebrity to attend football games. She's not the last one to attend football games. She's definitely not the first celebrity to date an athlete, right, or a football player. Maybe the, right. one of the largest ones, right? Yeah. At that. But it's, I think people are just kind of like, come on now, CBS and, and all the networks. Like, we get it. We get we it. Get it. <laughs> There's something happening on the field, which is why we're, we're we've you know paid these expensive subscriptions, Sonia, paid this cable bill. Most of us, I don't right. have for my sports package. Like you know, that's true. You know, it's like I'm dedicated to the craft of sports, you know, and that's kind of what we you know we want to see. And I think people do like the feature stories, but like there's a role and there's a place for that. And I don't know if it's always on the main broadcast of the game. I think the biggest one that was close to her, and she was not a phenom at all. Now she is with um, her shoe line. Jessica Simpson when she was dating Tony Ooh. Romo. However, right. that was the early 2000s right. and well, mid 2000s and social media was not. I would say it wasn't like it is now. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, but people had a problem with her being there because, you know, he was losing. So maybe if she was, if he was winning with Jessica, it's different. Maybe. But that's true. Winning helps. <laughs> winning helps. So that's why they're not bashing her too much. However, long as she, you know, stay in the um, box, with uh, Mama, Mama Travis, and um, 
leave Usher alone. I don't want to see you on the stage. That's Usher. <laughs> show, so mind your business. I just so, want the camera more on Patrick Mahomes Sr. personally. I think he's hilarious. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Give me more camera time of him. And I'll exactly. Be <laughs> he, is, he is definitely hilarious. I love him. So moving on to the second game, which was also a letdown for me also. Um, Cinderella story for the Detroit Lions. They yeah. lost to the 49ers. 34 to 31, they blew a 17 point lead. Mm. It was their game. And some people are saying that it was the Lions coach, Dan Campbell's fault. What yeah. are your thoughts on this game, Kelsey? Oh, so many thoughts. You know, my heart does yearn for Detroit, for you. Yeah. And like, y'all had this. Y'all essentially fumbled the bed. Like, at I least had Baltimore, it. Baltimore never had the lead, right? They were playing from behind that game. But Detroit, like you said, you had a 17 point lead. This was one of the largest comeback wins you've allowed at this point in the history of our team that's thirsting, Sonia. They're yearning, you know, for a Lombardi. And, you know, you think about it. We talked about how Kansas City got out to a fast start. Detroit got out to a fast start. They had the turnover, right? They had the interception that they were able to get from Purdy. Like, things just seemed like they were going right for Detroit, right? They could run that's the ball. Perfect. The offensive line was giving golf time to throw the ball. Like, I mean, just, it was literally, if I was writing a football script, it would have been how it started. But all of a sudden, you know, you the second half and, and football is a game of two halves right and it's yeah. not each one it's just they started to crumble right I mean yeah some of the obviously your receivers have to catch balls right I mean that's big you know you can't fumble the football like there's just some things that you can't do but even then it's like again they had a 17 point lead so this is some stuff that you should be you would think you to be able to overcome you start letting party run on his legs which he can be dangerous on and it just seemed like again everything that was going right just started to go wrong and you know I still keep thinking about that I you crazy catch that should have been an interception <laughs> bouncing off the helmet into the hands. Like, Detroit, and the, the, you know, and I know some people are going to say, well, yes, Dan Campbell, you know, shouldn't have went for it, you know, fourth down or kick the field goal. I mean, yes, that can play into it. But still, again, when you have a 17-point lead, that should be enough cushion in this type of game. Correct. Three <laughs> scores. That's three scores that you had essentially on top of the team. And there's no excuse. But, you know, all gone. I can't take away from the 49ers. It's easy when you're down like that to just think it's over, right? But they just kept pushing, kept battling, kept inching in, and eventually obviously get the lead and being able to really, you know, stop the Lions from really getting any any offensive rhythm. Um, yeah. And then obviously, you know, throwing off the defense and being able to find spaces and gaps that they weren't able to in the first half. You know, so all in all, like I said, I feel for Detroit. Like they had the storybook story, you know, finally getting there. People, right people in place. We believe in Dan Campbell, you know, and then and then this happens. And so, you know, I think Detroit, it's like the two teams most people were rooting for. Like America's teams were like the Ravens and the Lions. Like yeah. every the Ravens because you know I think people knew the the monkey on the back that Lamar has had you know Correct. being a player but needing to get to the Super Bowl to kind of hopefully stop this narrative and show he is quarterbacky but can also run and then you know on the other side you know you have the Detroit Lions who again were a team that I think surprised some folks I mean the Lions haven't been relevant in a while and all of a sudden they're they're okay. relevant and they're winning and we're excited and you know you think not in the Lions I think even more so like what they mean for the city of Detroit you know all of us know about yes. Detroit know what that city has been through and so I think just having a team both of them really I think Baltimore and Detroit so you're both blue collar teams you think about both those towns and the people right. and these towns like it would have just been special like if I could write a movie script it would be probably the Ravens in Detroit playing yeah. in, the, in Las <laughs> Vegas of all places like it just would have been, been perfect it would have been so fumbled, perfect the foe fumbled the ball I Eminem mean, might have released something new for us like he might have came up with Usher like there's just they messed up everything. <laughs> I mean, they, they really, you're right. So, so Kelsey, do you think the Lions, do you think they have it in them to be able to get back to the place for yeah. next season? If they have the same players, same yeah. coaches, same, you know, do you think they can possibly get, get back there? You know, it's hard, right? Because each season is different. You know, it's like, you know, players are about to go into the off season. They're about to try to either rebuild or keep their bodies. You know, a lot of guys are obviously trying to get more physically fit, right? You're trying to keep your stamina up. And then, of course, mental wise, you know, you're trying to, you know, keep your mind in the game. You have free agency period, right? That's going to start. And you're going to have some guys change for the right reasons, right? Going to chase that money. <laughs> Um, you know, or maybe try to chase a ring if they don't feel like that team can go back. It's hard. You, know, you establish an identity and a culture and a locker room 
you know, that obviously is is unique to each season. You know, like I think they got a, a sigh of relief when Ben Johnson said he's coming back, right? And the coaching mm -hmm. ranks, because, you know, that was one I think that might have changed some things. But right. it's, it's, it's just going to be hard, like, to be back in that place. I mean, of course you want it, but each team is going to re-up Sonia. Each team yeah. is going to fight and battle harder. And, of course, you know, so, I, you know, I'm not saying it's over for the Lions, but this was special. This was, this was special. This was an anomaly season. And, you this know, again, special. it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you have a, a perfect day, you don't know where you're going to have a perfect day again. Like it just happens and you just, you can't calculate where the next one's going to go, you know, and everything goes right. So it's like, I mean, that's I mean really Ice Cube wrote about it. He said, today was a good day. <laughs> yes. This season was a good season, y'all. Yes. Y'all had yeah, it. It happen so. again. It's like when you find a dollar, or maybe you find a $20 <laughs> bill on the streets on you. You don't know when that's going to happen again. You're excited for that. That's true. You know, and it's like with the lion season, that's what I'm saying. Like we found something, we loved it, but we don't know when we're going to see it again. So that's again, I mean, you would hope that they want to get back, but let's be honest. Many of us thought the Philadelphia Eagles would get back after falling short in the Super Bowl last year, and right? And thinking, oh they're gonna be hungry they're gonna be dogs in that locker room they're gonna to want to get back to this point because they fumbled the bag last season in the super bowl and lost the big game but what happened to the philadelphia eagles we saw them unravel in the playoffs so that's what i'm saying it's hard to say you're going to be back to that same point because anything can happen unfortunately that's true. We, yeah we saw them start unraveling at the like the last few games before the playoffs. first time to unravel like, what is going on <laughs> So you're right. You're right. Well, oh, I wish them well. Um, you know, I'm a Bears fan. I was rooting for you, for you Lions, and that'll probably be my last <laughs> time. So, <laughs> sorry. My, I mean, my heart was hurt. So, Kelsey, right. last week, moving <laughs> on to basketball, we witnessed a historical shutdown. I mean, uh, showdown between um, South Carolina Gamecocks, number one, and yeah. number nine LSU Tigers. Yeah. And, um, of course, the Gamecocks, they won 76-7, but what I want to talk about now, because, you know, everybody talked about that game. It, it's an instant yeah. classic. Yes. I mean, it was a fight to the finish. They fouled out by you, Barbie. I mean, you know, it was just, it was, it was, tough. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> but uh, Coach Dan Staley, Don Staley, she, um, a reporter, asked her um, how does she feel about the fans, the LSU fans, um, the crowd, how they were, um, did, did she say booing her? Yeah, the hostile crowd. and The hostile crowd and uh -huh. jokingly, Coach, um, how does she feel about the hostile, hostile crowd? And um, jokingly, Coach Staley said, mm, they were friendly to me. They yeah. called me boo. <laughs> and so what a way, what a lesson for all of us. Your haters, you know, you can... You can look at it negative or you can look at it positive. And yeah. she took it as they call me boo. You know, they, they call me boo. And I love that to the point a few days later when they played Vanderbilt, she actually wore a black hoodie saying boo on the <laughs> hoodie. And, you know, yeah. so, of course, people played along. They played my boo by Usher. Uh, and, which is the you song. Know, <laughs> I, I love that. That's your boo, please. I know. I can't wait. The boo for us. He, better, he better do it. And so, you know, it was just amazing. But how you know it's just like she I love coach I oh, love we coach. all love coach daily like there's a reason why Sonia she's been in the game this long like we've been watching yeah. the helm of South Carolina for over a decade and what she's been able to build there you know has been so special and one thing I love about coach daily is once she turns this into a marketing moment y'all if you ever yes. say something that starts a trend do it They're like, one of the shirts I'm wearing now this is from Bayou Barbie's collection that I had a I love to it Right. And I'm a Maryland girl. She's a Maryland girl. Um, you know, so it's right. great. She made, you know, she obviously was able to capitalize off of Bayou Barbie quite instantly. And I'm happy for mm -hmm. any success in that. But going back to Don Staley, one, I feel like she's me. I feel like I have that smart sense of humor where <laughs> if you say something, I'm just going to turn it in. So I'm like, oh, they were really blowing me out. Oh, oh. this. You know, like that's something I, so I felt like when she said that it was hilarious. And you know, press conference films can be you know, sometimes, you know, they're trying to make light. Like sometimes it can be stuffy because you feel like a lot, you're getting a lot of the same questions or mm -hmm. you know, sometimes coaches don't want to be there. They want to be celebrating with their team yeah. stuff like that. So I felt like she like light, like lightened up the mood. And, you know, I think right. they, they think it was good for this rivalry because you already know next time this happens, they're going to be wearing <laughs> I cannot wait because she turned the boo like you said into something positive um and she gave us something to laugh about and then she gave us a storyline to follow women's college basketball which I think is even bigger you know mm -hmm. sometimes people are saying like well women people don't follow women's sports because they don't have the storylines off the court she gives a perfect storyline Sonia that we're talking about right now yes. 
off the court to laugh at. And like I said, I mean, this was the game to watch. And now we're laughing at, you know, fans who thought they were rattling Coach Daly and her team. And again, talking about a team that was able to get it done in the second half, i.e. Yeah, kind of game talks, you know, who turned it on a whole nother notch. After, like the first half of that game, you thought it might be over. Like, what's wrong with Coach Daly? I didn't team? know what was going on. Exactly. I saw her face though. I was like, well, I knew yeah. she was about to say some stuff in the locker room. I knew she was saying something in that locker room to that team because she knows who this team is and who they right. can be. But, you know, I absolutely love the moment. Thank you, Coach Daly, for, again, just making Thank the game you. fun, like keeping it fun, keeping it lighthearted, and giving us, again, just something to to talk about to, again, keep that kind of rivalry brewing and going. Right. Um, and also, like I said, she just keeps bringing more people to the game. How can you not like her? How can you not like Coach Daly? It's so cool. <laughs> and what she does and what she embodies. Absolutely. I love her. So <laughs> we're going to move back a little bit back to football. Now, this story, it's – it's, it's close to my heart, Ms. Jane Kennedy. So on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, CBA Sports will present You Are Looking Live, the show that changed sports television forever. A one-hour original special about the story of the NFL today, the groundbreaking studio show that altered the landscape of sports TV. The special debuts on Sunday, February 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern time on CBS and Paramount+. Plus. So um, I'm gonna give a little more information about this because a lot of people don't know, but You Are Looking Live reflects on the origins of the NFL Today's half century of studio coverage, featuring interviews with the only surviving early cast members, Brent Musburger and Jane Kennedy, as well as current TV personalities, including John Nance, Nate Burlinson, and Gail King. It will also feature a virtual recre recreation, I think this is gonna be dope, of the iconic NFL Today set from 1985. Kelsey, were you even born? No. <laughs> That's what I thought. You were still with Jesus. And <laughs> you never before, so this will be this will be special for you. Yeah. Never before seen archival footage. You are looking live, uses innovative technology to take viewers back in time. So, you know, um, before Jane Kennedy was on that show, it was uh, Miss America, former Miss America, Phyllis George. She was the first right. female commentator. Right. Right. And um, Jane replaced her. And what are your thoughts on these groundbreaking women? I mean, not only was Phyllis George the first female commentator, but Jane Kennedy was the first Black female commentator. What are your thoughts on that and what they've done for this, us? This excites me. It excites me. You know, one of the best pro, one of the best projects I had when I was in college, um, Sonia, it was on Jane Kennedy. And I'm so thankful for my professor, Mark Gray, for, you know, um, he's like, Kelsey, there's someone you need to you need to look at. And it was sure enough, it was Jane Kennedy. And you know, I had heard about her, but you know, when I looked deeper and researched her, I was just so impressed, you know, by the field and yeah. that she was able to trailblaze, you know, for herself and what she represented, you know, in, in a place where again, she was the one. You know, right, like you said, the first. Like that's that's always a lot to carry wow. on yourself. And you look at the black woman, look at me and you, you look at black women in sports yeah. today and you know what it's been and how we've been able to create our own paths and narratives. But you know, I I'm always intentional when I say this if it were not for her, for her we would yeah. not and I'm going to say that again if we're not for her we would not be we stand on the shoulders of giants and that that's truly true and you know she's one of those I don't think she gets enough credit or recognition um for what she represented or what she what she did for women in sports and you know helping to open that door and show that we could do it too we could hang with the fellas and so right. I'm excited for this you talked about it people my age and younger you know haven't had a chance you know to see it all in the greatness and it's one thing to hear about something but it's another thing to see it right yeah. so I think it's going to be really um intentional really smart that they're doing and I think for all of us again sports fans it just brings us back to like this is I mean for me it's like seeing women like that when I'm like, dang, I want to do what she's doing, you know, right. and of course I want to have my own spit on it. But, you know, when you see, seeing is believing, that's the same reason why I talk to kids today, because then you know, when they see something, it's easier to believe that you can be it. So seeing her on camera, seeing what she's meant, even that picture, I mean, I'm so inspired. So every time I come on with you and I see that it's a reminder of those who came before, yes. and how hopefully we'll keep opening the doors for those after, even in the midst of this crazy sports media environment that that's we're true. So I'm so excited for it, Sonia. I'm I, so I can't, excited. I can't I, wait. I, it's on my calendar. <laughs> I, absolutely. I'm, I'm really excited. And like you said, especially, um, and I'm going to make sure um, female sports casters or journalists that I know that are young young ladies that are wanting to get in this field, they have to watch that on Sunday because oh, sure. it's yeah. so important. I know the Super Bowl is important, but this moment in time is so, so very important. And then just to hear it from her, from her mouth and it's, you know, I, 
I'm excited. I'm really, really special, excited. special. Because so you don't get to hear from her really. So the, yeah, to hear from her is going to be going to be very unique, and um, hopefully a moment that we'll all cherish and remember for a long time. Absolutely, Kelsey. Thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you for having me. Always a blast. However, you know we got a game to play, but it's a new game. It's something different. Okay, what's the game? <laughs> so, Rob was my guinea pig last week, and he he was perfect. So oh, shoot, Rob, like, you got the bar high. <laughs> I know. So it's called what you know. So it's football trivia. Okay. That's different stuff, you know. And if you miss, that's fine. It, it doesn't mean you. I mean, because you're still. <laughs> That's, he was like, oh, God. He was like, you know, I, if I had got any wrong, I'm a, I mean, I'm a, I'm a sports writer. I'm like, but Rod. I know. You know all people are so, so we'll, we'll start. And these two, now this one you should know. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> Fresh as well. Which two teams have purple uniforms? Obviously, Baltimore Ravens and Minnesota Vikings. Good job. <laughs> How many yards is is it for a first down? Each first down, you got to go 10 yards. <laughs> How many games is the NFL regular season? Oh, shoot. And this one, I'm probably going to mess up for you. We had 17 weeks. You get a bye week. So 16 weeks? 16 weeks? 17. <laughs> oh, that's right. These went up again. It was yeah, you said it. I was like, you said it. I was like, I had the old one. <laughs> What is the most expensive NFL franchise according to Forbes? Dallas Cowboys. Correct. Which player was nicknamed the Fridge? Oh my gosh. Um, I think it's I can see his face. I thought he's been on my show. Sonia, my mind is skipping. I told you, Rob, you, you, you weren't about. born. You weren't born. No, but I know this one. And it's it's my he's on my team. You are. Falcons. No, you're not a Falcons. The you're Bears. Hello. The Bears. That's right. The Bears. Um. Why is my mind going blank? I knew this was gonna happen for one of them. All right, I'm just gonna surrender because I don't want to waste people's time. No. William Perry. The Perry. Yeah. William the Perry. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's sorry. So to my that's Chicago like family. family. I'm just so. Yeah. Mean. Yeah. All right. How many players? <laughs> how many players line up on offense on any given play? On offense, all right, we have 53 man rosters and you can't have more than 11 on the football field. <laughs> How many rounds is the NFL draft? Is it seven? Mm -hmm. Who is the NFL's all time leading passer? Of course, Brady come to, comes to mind, but I feel like, is it Tom Brady? Yeah. It's Tom Brady. Okay, I thought we might have to go old school. I'm like, no. <laughs> Which teams play in Florida? Let's see. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We have the Miami Dolphins. Mm -hmm. There's one more that I think I'm missing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Buccaneers, Dolphins. What part of Florida am I missing? Oh, Jacksonville Jaguars. I was like, where do I live? <laughs> I'm like, where else in Florida? Last Sorry, but not least. Last I don't cover the Jaguars right. as much. <laughs> Last but not least, the clock stops to give a warning. The half or game will end soon. When does that happen? Two minutes. Absolutely. <laughs> I knew you would do well. I knew you would do I well. I the Bears one. I couldn't do perfect like Rod, but you know. <laughs> okay. I'll take my A minus. <laughs> Chelsea, thank you so much for joining me. Let the listeners know how they can follow you on social media as well as yeah. listen in with KNN. Well, thank you so much for having me. Please check out Listen In With KNN. You can go to listeninwithknn.com and follow me on social media at The Real K Nelson on social and Kelsey Nicole Nelson. So excited to be able to connect with y'all and just, and chop, chop, you know, chop it up. Talk talk sports, talk shop, and I have a good time, as always. <laughs> and her show was awesome last night. I really enjoyed it. So it much. Really I really appreciate it. Eric Swan was amazing. I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful for the people that I cross paths with. So thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. And guys, you can follow me at She Say, She Say Sports on Facebook, She Say She Say Sports 23 on Instagram, and please subscribe to our YouTube page, She Say She Say Sports. Well, that's my show for today. Until next time, this is Sonya and Kelsey with She Say She Say Sports and Kelsey's Corner. Bye. Bye.